Hey, it's time for another video. Uh, this week we're going back again to the Middle Ages, or I guess the Dark Ages, really. And we are going to be doing this, which is a Viking warrior who is just swinging his axe here and looking scary as hell. Um, <laughs> this is a figure by Gripping Beast, I believe, and it is sculpted by the ever awesome Bill Thornhill, who is also a really nice guy. So, hi Bill, if you see this. Anyway, we're going to be painting this guy. He's not very complicated, but I think he's, he's got a lot of great action to him, you know, and I know a lot of people are doing these kinds of figures because Vikings are ridiculously popular right now in Wargaming with Saga and the like, you know, out. And everybody has practically some kind of Viking warband or something that they're using. And these guys are not really that hard to paint. They're pretty simple, which is probably another reason they appeal so much. But, you know, there's still some tips and tricks that everyone could probably use to, um, you know, learn when they're doing these guys. So we're just going to go get started on that. Um, a quick note first before that about uh, prepping this guy. Um, there's a, I've done something a little bit different here. He's got a gray enamel base coat like I usually have my figures, but I have not painted his chain now. I have left that bare metal for reasons which you will see shortly. Uh, this may take a little bit more care when you're doing the base coating because you have to avoid painting the metal. So I actually did this with a pretty small brush and I was careful, not a good brush, just a small brush. So you ha you'll have to spend a little bit more time on base coating, but it has some, um, you know, added advantages later on. So don't paint the uh, male coat, just the other parts. And of course, I've also done his skin on his face and hands, so that's all ready to go. And as, I, as usual, if you want to know more about that, you can check out one of my earlier videos. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be showing you a nice trick for painting uh, chain mail that is quite simple and sort of takes advantage of the natural qualities of the figure. So for the chain mail on this figure, we're going to be relying on the natural metal. And instead of painting it like is a traditional technique, we're just going to use the bare metal and uh, enhance it a little bit. So the first step we take here is to burnish the surface. And I'm using a little fine dental pick, something that lets you get down in all the cracks and crevices. And I'm basically just rubbing it over the um, metal surface of the chain mail to make the exterior shiny and give it some polish. Now we're going to apply a wash of uh, Citadel Nuln oil all over the chain mail so that it goes down into the cracks. And we want to avoid pooling here but we just want a nice, even coat at this point. And then just, you know, we'll go back and shade the mail later. Once the initial wash is dry, we're going to do some shading on the chain mail. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back in with the null and oil and sort of apply some pin washes to areas that we want to be very dark, like under the sleeves and around the sort of the belt and the trim of the chain mail and those kinds of places. And we'll put it on multiple layers in some cases to build up some extra, you know, color and depth in those areas where we need it. We can also warm up the chain mail a little bit by taking a brown wash. In this case, I used Agrax Earth Shade and applying that sparingly in some areas where I'm putting shadows big. And that sort of gives it a more well, sort of warmth that it won't get otherwise. And if you apply a lot, you can also get sort of a rusty effect. If you want sort of a, you know, dirty, yucky chain mail on your figure, that's a good way to go about it. And once you're done with the wash, you can also go back over and burnish uh, areas that you want to feel extra light, you know, and to correct for areas that you feel like might have gotten too dark from the washing. And that basically takes care of the paint chain mail. That was really quick and easy, right? So we can move on to the other areas of this figure, and I'm going to start out by doing all of the cloth, which are includes his breeches and um, also his tunic. I am going to paint the pants using the um, uh, foundry forest green triad. Uh, they just do it very quick and easy. There's not very much exposed, so it's not a big deal. Um, once I finish that, I'm going to go back and work on the tunic, which I'm going to do using foundry storm blue. And I'm going to use the full triad. And once I've applied that, I'm going to also make a fourth lighter shade by mixing the, the storm blue light in with some white and using that kind of to for the high creases on the edges of his sleeves and you know high wrinkles 
Also, just to add a little nice detail to the fabric, you know, so it, you know it's more interesting to look like at, I'm gonna put some stripes sort of around his cuffs, and I'm gonna do that using the green from the pants so that there's a nice unity between the pants and the shirt. And I'm just gonna do that by, you know, making um, the forest green, you know, shade stripe, and then applying the three or the two other colors on top of that until I get a result that I'm satisfied with. Next I'm going to apply a base coat to all of the leather areas. And because there are a lot of leather areas on this figure, I want to use several different colors so there's some good variation. So for the boots, I'm going to apply um, um, a base coat of Foundry uh, Rawhide Shade, and then um, the belt and sort of baldric and the sheath for his dagger. All of those are going to have a base coat of um, Vallejo German Camouflage uh, Black Brown. And then finally, I am going to also apply um, Foundry uh, Conquer uh, Brown shade to sort of all the edges of his uh, male shirt. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention also his little satchel that he's, or little bag he's wearing in the back of his belt. I'm doing that using the rawhide color as well. Um, then one other thing I'm going to do to prepare the surfaces is I'm going to take those rawhide areas and I'm going to apply a um, Agrax Earthshade wash to those so that I get a little darker color and you know build up some nice uh, depth in the creases. I'm then going to go ahead and apply the rest of the Foundry Rawhide Triad to the boots in his uh, purse and just build up the colors there. Um, and I'm going to apply the layers pretty thinly because you know, the, the base coat of the rawhide is pretty dark, so you have to be careful that you don't get too stark a result at this point. I'm then going to add an extra high highlight to the purse and boots using um, buff leather light from one of the foundry triads. And this is just on the creases and edges of these areas in order to get an extra pop of color going. After that I'm going to work on the belt, the baldric, and the scabbards. And I'm going to take some bay brown medium and I'm going to apply that sort of onto the belts, not all the way down, but sort of starting the top and blending it out a little bit, if that makes sense, because you want to give the air, sort of the idea of a very dark leather that started to wear around the edges. So I apply the, the, the um, bay brown first, and then I'm going to move on to um, the foundry chestnut shade color, doing the same thing, sort of applying it to one uh, side of the belts, baldrics and scabbards, and sort of blending out a little bit to get that sort of faded sort of edge leather look. And I will take then finally the chestnut medium and I will use that to add one final sort of edge highlight to, and that is really only gonna be on the very edges of those leather belts and um, scabbards. And now I'm going to do highlights on the leather edging of the male shirt. I'm, as mentioned before, using Concord Brown for that. And I already base coated it, so now I'm going to take the medium and light shades of the Concord Brown and um, just also, sort of like what I did before, I sort of choose one side and apply it to that and sort of blend it downwards in order to, you know, sort of give this idea of uh, more light hitting one area and also that it looks a little bit more worn. Um, once I'm done, I'm also going to take some of the lightest shade of Concord Brown and I am going to mix, I think I used some of that buff leather light again mixed into it and I'm going to use that so I can create one sort of final very thin edge highlight to apply to these sort of um, um, edging areas of the male. I'm now going to do some various detail work on the figure. I'm going to first paint the shaft of the axe using um, Bay Brown Dark. Once I have finished that up, I'm going to sort of have an interlude. I'm going to paint the handles of the uh, sword and the dagger, and I am going to be using uh, raw linen medium to do that, and then I'll re highlight them really quickly using some white until I feel satisfied because I want just sort of a bone look. You could also use the boneyard triad for this, it would re work really well, but I was being lazy. Um, now I'm going to go back in and highlighting the, the shaft of the axe using chestnut dark and chestnut medium just to build up some light and tone on the top as I am fond of using those colors for painting wood handles if you've seen any of my tutorials where 
I am painting gun stocks, I often do something very simple. Now I'm going to take care of the metal areas on the figure. I've already base coated the brass sort of gold fittings using um, Vallejo German camouflage black brown and a mix and some bronze mixed into it and I will highlight those again with bronze. I am base coating the axe head using a mixture of Vallejo natural steel and German gray. Then I am going to go back in and highlight the brass and bronze fittings uh, first with some bronze and then with some gold to provide kind of a high highlight. The axe head is going to be highlighted using um, Vallejo Natural Steel and on the sort of the sharp cutting part of that axe head I'm just going to take some pure silver and I'm going to build that up till I get a nice clean line and make the thing look very sharp. Uh, later on I will also go back in and wash the axe head with a little bit of blue wash just to make it look more like blued steel. Now I'm finally getting to his hair which I saved for last because it's an area I handle a lot and I am going to make him nice and viking, give him some nice flaming brown red kind of orange hair. I'm giving it this hair a base coat of um, foundry chestnut shade and uh, once I've applied that to all of his nice scruffy facial hair I will go ahead and take an Agrax earth shade wash and apply that to sort of darken everything up a bit. I'm then going to go over and highlight the hair, first using the, the chestnut medium color and then the chestnut light color on some of the areas I really want to stand out, like his braids and really around his face and beard. And uh, once I've finished uh, applying all the sort of highlights to the hair, which you can do sort of with a very gentle overbrushing if you're careful because there's so much um, depth in the hair strands, I'm going to take some Agrax Earth Shade once again and apply a wash all over everything again because this will help give the whole thing some unity and so you won't have uh, hair, the hair look too, the highlighting look too severe basically. And so that's about it for our Viking warrior. As I said, he was pretty simple to paint. He was quick and easy. I hope you really like this method of painting chainmail. It's pretty common actually on larger scale figures like 54 millimeter, but for whatever reason, it doesn't get applied as often on 28 millimeter. But as you can see, it's really quick and easy. It gives you a really good result. So I would definitely give it a try. It's a nice, fast, uh, uh, technique. I would recommend that you put some varnish on this figure and especially onto the chainmail area because since all we've really applied is washes it's probably more likely to come off if it doesn't have some protection. Uh, so once again if you enjoyed this video please like it, please subscribe to my channel, leave me comments with what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see in the future. Uh, tell your friends to watch these videos and uh, have fun painting units for your own uh, Viking war band. So I will see you next time.